<laughs> Butterflies, man. <laughs> Check this shit out. <laughs> It's like, you know, what is in a butterfly's mind? I don't know. I don't know if anyone knows that. It's an interesting philosophical question. Boy, if they were cognizant, can you imagine, like, what, how crazy their life would be? So they emerge from an egg, and they're really small. They're, you know, certainly smaller than a grain of rice. So little caterpillar, really, really big world. They're very vulnerable when they're caterpillars. That's bird food, and that's spider food, and that's wasp food. There's a lot of things that are trying to always kill them. So the faster they can grow, and the more quickly they can become an adult, the better for them. They are just eating machines. And they start eating, and they're doing everything that they're supposed to be doing. They're putting on weight, they're getting fatter, they're getting fatter. And then they'll get to a certain size where their body's too big for their head. And because they're insects and they have an exoskeleton, you can't stretch that, you can't grow that. So can you imagine like your head splits in half and you shed your old head, your old mouth, all of the tissue like going down into your stomach, you're puking all of that up and now you got a whole new skin, right? And now you're a second instar caterpillar. Boy, if you had a memory of that first experience and you knew that you had five instars, that would be a lot of anxiety, wouldn't it? It's like, God, I didn't like that the first time. And they shed everything. Their gas transfer is literally little tubes full of air that go around throughout their entire body. But when they shed, all of that gets shed with them. So all of that internal plumbing also kind of gets pulled out of them. And so that seems like it would be traumatic. Clearly it works for them because, you know, 40% of all described multicellular life on the planet does this exact thing, right? It's the same thing the bees do and flies do and wasps and, and other things like that. And then when they're done doing that, maybe they think that they've gotten a hang of that. It's like, oh yeah, I got a hang of this caterpillar thing. It was kind of creepy the first couple of times, but I got this all figured out. Now they're gonna pupate and pupation is really cool, but that would be a weird one because now not only is their head splitting and they're shedding into a new stage, but that new stage looks absolutely nothing like a caterpillar, right? It looks like a pupa, a chrysalis. And now they're just like all liquid goo and there's only one little area of cells that is sticking around. And from that one little area of cells, they totally rebuild a body that looks absolutely nothing like what they've looked like since they emerged from the egg. And so now they're in this immovable pupil stage. They molt out of that, and now all of a sudden, they are definitely not a caterpillar anymore. Their mouth is like a long straw, essentially. They have these deflated balloons hanging off of their back, and they are just super full of liquid and they have to pump all that liquid out to inflate their wings that then harden, and then all of a sudden they know how to fly away. Not only do they know how to fly away, they know what to look for because they're gonna go mate. And then they know what host plant they want because they know what it looks like and what it smells like. This is all kind of really crazy, instinctual things that they do. I mean, maybe it's good that their brain kind of turns into mush and they make a new brain when they become an adult because that would be pretty traumatic. You know, I, I can't pretend to know, but my guess would be, no, I don't think that they have any idea. They're just, they're doing the thing that insects do. Bugs do so many cool things, but how do you convince somebody to care about something that is so different from us? slow down and appreciate the small things that are out there because there's a lot of them. That's what I would like. I would like the whole world to spend two minutes a day for a year just trying to find a new little thing that they had never seen before. And I think at the end of that year, I think they will be excited about like, yeah, these things are, not only are they just wonderful that we share the planet with them, but there are so many of them, they can't not be really important. <laughs> 
And so, yeah, that, I guess that would be my, my parting thing, is to, like, give a bug a hug. I think so. Yeah. I do. <laughs> it's been putting food on my table for the last 18 years. <laughs>